things that have happened in our life, a lot of things happen through our, our days here and as we experience things that impact our life, that have a, a definite impact on the rest of our life, the things that we do as we go on. And they might not seem like big things, and they might, they might be big things, like the Y2K was a, was a pretty big thing, and I know how it affected a lot of people, and it's pretty amazing that it didn't, it turned out to be absolutely nothing, but there's a lot of things that as we go through life it, it has a, it has an, an impact, and and this is a part of learning. But but you know, we, we one of the biggest parts, the most difficult part of growing and learning, is learning to trust. That's an amazing word, trust. You know, sometimes when we first meet somebody, we're there for a very first time we meet them because maybe because of who they are, maybe because if we knew their family, we we trust them. Just immediately we trust people, and sometimes no matter how much somebody deserves to be trusted, we just don't. We just have a, a leery part about us. And sometimes we'll trust, but we keep a reservation. Sometimes we're willing to trust somebody, and we're like, well, I'll trust them until they give me a reason not to. But we're looking for that reason not to already. And trust is a thing that, that a lot of times it's difficult for us to, to have trust in people or in things because of past experiences, things that have happened in the past. Now, if they said, oh, 2021, all the computers are going to crash. Would you believe it? No, because of past experience, we know they probably really don't know what they're talking about. But a lot of people did believe it in 1999. A lot of people did believe that they put a lot of faith and trust in the people that was telling them these things, that they went and did their great extents to try to prepare for the, when the computers crashed. But it, nothing happened. So now our trust in the ones that might tell us that is pretty diminished because we see by past experience that, that we can't trust them. And a lot of times, uh, there's just there's really no way to know how and who and what to trust. I had that 2017 Dodge pickup. I didn't trust it at all. I finally took it back. <coughs> I just didn't trust it. I, could, I just couldn't. I just didn't feel like I could rely on it. There was no reason not to, other than just myself. But as time has gone on, I've seen that there's probably a pretty good reason for that. John was here, and he got a 2019, and he's had a substantial problem with his. Another guy I know in Arizona City bought a 2017 that was the same year as mine, and he ended up taking his back because it, I mean, he just traded it in because it was cheaper to trade it in than it was to pay to get it fixed. So we see that, you know, sometimes when it's just a, just I really just don't trust it. There's just there's a reason behind it. But but trust is one of those things that again is very difficult for us to really put our trust. Or Ernest Hemingway put it this way. He says the best way to find out if you can trust anybody is to trust them. Well, that makes it sound pretty simple, don't it? But do we really do we really honestly trust them? Do we really honestly put our trust in something until we have some kind of background, until we have some kind of substantial information that allows us to trust, we keep that reservation. We're not willing to trust until we have a really good reason to. Now, trust, 
by definition, is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of somewhere or something. Now, this is where it gets difficult. A firm belief. A firm belief. A firm belief in something without having really any information about if I can trust it or not. A firm belief. You know, there's some things just because of the nature of them that we know better than to trust them. If a guy walked up and said, Hi, I want you to trust me. My name is Billy the Kid. Uh, you'd be like, oh, I ain't trusting you. <laughs> now, if he said, I can't, I can't imitate him, but if I could, I would. If he said his name was Jimmy Stewart, Very sure. we'd be a little more, a little more <laughs> willing to trust him. <laughs> Just be by the nature. But some, sometimes we don't, sometimes when we're asked to trust, we don't really have any kind of background. Let's, let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 10. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. It says we labor and we suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. Does that sound like something you really want to do? Does that sound like something you really want to be part of? I'm going to labor and suffer reproach because I trust Him? Whoa, wait a minute. We labor and we suffer reproach because we trust in the living God. Listen to how he says that. The reason that we suffer reproach and labor is because we trust. Because we put our, hand, our life in the hands of God. Because we come to a point in our life when we said, Lord, I can't even trust myself. Myself gets me in a lot of trouble. The guy that looks at me in the morning and is not trustworthy. He's not a good guy. He talks me into doing things. He takes me places I don't want to go. I can't trust him. But because I trust God, I suffer labor and reproach. Because I decided that, you know, I can't trust the guy in the mirror. I'm going to trust God. I suffer labor and reproach because now a battle is going on within myself. Paul talks about this. Because I'm trusting God, the battle becomes, because the old me wants to do things the old way. The, the flesh, human part of me, had a good time doing things that way and thought it was good. But the spiritual side of me says, no, I trust God. So I suffer labor and reproach within myself. Because I trust God. Because I know at the end of the day, I can't trust myself. I know if I trust myself at the end of the day, I know where I'm going to wind up. But in trusting God, I know that there's better for me. There's, because God is, is, is who He is and because I can trust Him. Now, how can I trust Him? What leads me to trusting God? Go to Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So now I'm trusting in something that I don't even agree with. In my human carnal self, his thoughts and his ways are not my thoughts and my ways. When we trust something, we trust something because it works out pretty good for us. When we're willing to put our trust in, when I'm willing to put my trust in a pickup, is because I can get in it and drive it where it's going and know it's going to get me there, and if it doesn't, I can fix it. Therefore, within myself, I tend to trust things. But when I'm trusting God, I have to trust Him even though I don't even understand what He's doing. I have to have a blind faith. A trust that says no matter what it looks like to my eyes, no matter how the world perceives it, no matter how everything else is, I have to trust Him first. And I have to trust Him foremost. And I have to trust Him no matter what. Even though it doesn't make sense to me. Even though the preacher and the pastor and all the people I've heard for years and years said, you need to pray the prayer, you need to pray the sinner's prayer, you need to accept Jesus in your life, you need to allow Him to begin the work in your life. How can I trust that? 
When I come up here and I kneel down and I pray and I get up and I walk away and it feels the same. Where do I learn to trust it? By getting to know it. How do I learn to trust God? By getting to know it. By spending time learning about him because that's where we learn to trust. When, he, when, we, when we're willing to when we're willing to sacrifice, we're willing to say, I'm going to put my trust in something I don't understand because I know the alternative. I know the alternative. If I don't trust him, I know how that works. And they've been doing that for a while. And it hasn't turned out so good. But when I put my faith in, if I trust in God, there's a new alternative. There's something more than what I've ever had before. There's something that I don't see and I don't understand, but if I trust it, from what I've heard, it makes a big difference. If I'm willing to put, if I just, if I'm just going to decide to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to just trust, because there's no place else to go, you're going to trust in something. See, that's the key. Your faith is going to be somewhere. Either in what you can do for yourself or in what God can do for you. That's where the trust thing comes. We have to decide to trust. And that as we, when we've decided to put our, our, our life and decided to put our trust in the Lord, then it's not important if His ways are my ways. I understand that His ways are beneficial to me. Even though they're not the way I would do it, they're beneficial. It makes a difference. It has an impact on my life. Because I've trusted in something a lot greater than myself. See, Billy the Kid trusted in himself. He defended himself. He protected himself. He hid himself. He ran away from things by himself. He did. He trusted in himself. But when God begins to work in our life, we begin to see that, that I can trust him. When I, when I come to a place in my life that I want to trust my life for the Lord, and then I begin to pray, and things begin to happen, it's like, wow, I can trust him. Things will happen when I stop to pray. When I stop to put my trust in, when I stop and say, Lord, help me with this, and he helps me, I can trust him. I was talking to somebody the other day about, about trusting the Lord in all, in all the crazy little circumstances of our life, learning to just trust him. Any guy, I can't remember who it was I was talking to, you probably here today. I said, yeah, you know, Sometimes I drop something like a little spring and I go, okay, Lord, help me find it. And he shows me where it's at. The simple little things when we learn that we can trust and we get to put our trust in it, the trust begins to grow. And it becomes more and more to the point that I can trust him in everything that I do. Just as the scripture teaches me, just as I learn by reading his word, just as I learn by getting closer to him, I learn that I can trust him while I'm driving down the freeway. I can trust him while I'm having my morning coffee. I can trust him at the beginning of the day to get me all the way through to the end of the day. I can trust him. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. <coughs> verse 9. <coughs> but we had a sentence of death on ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raises the dead. See, we had a trust in ourselves that brought us to a place of death, that, that led us to a place of full of a, a life of sin, and sin against God, the wages of that sin is death. But we had a sentence of death on ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. This is where this is the this is the biggie. This is where it comes from. I know I can't trust in myself. I know that I have to have trust in something else. Because again, I have seen the results of trusting in myself. I have seen what happens when I allow myself to be in charge. I have a history there. <clears throat> have you ever hit yourself in the hand, in the hand with a hammer? <laughs> have you ever cut your finger with a table saw? Yeah. <laughs> Not anybody specific in case you know. <laughs> how, 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 tr how trustworthy am I to myself to not harm myself?